And Morgan, despite those fighting words, faith leaders in Sacramento are speaking out tonight. Take a listen. This group of people are some of the strongest people, not just that I've ever met, but that I've ever even heard legend of. I mean, these aren't stories from old that have been embellished over time. These are stories in the here and now. Lawmakers and community leaders trying to help tonight after 36 migrants arrived here in Sacramento. We are hearing from the asylum seekers themselves as these groups band together to try to stay safe. ABC 10's Roxanne Elias is live at Trinity Episcopal Cathedral, where leaders and organizations met this morning. Roxanne, what's top of mind right now for the people helping them? Well, Laura, behind these closed doors here, the priority is the well-being of these migrants who have had to go through some of the worst experiences on their journey here to the U.S. For the first time through an audio recording, we're hearing the voice of one of the migrants dropped off in Sacramento. In Spanish, he says, well, either way, I feel very grateful and long live the people of Sacramento. Sacramento area congregations together says the 36 migrants are being cared for after they say they were tricked onto a plane from El Paso, Texas. Folks feel scared. They feel scared. They said um, halfway through their travel, they realized that they were not going to a job site. Instead, they were going to go somewhere far away. They realized that it, they were probably in trouble and so some of them thought you know they were getting you know like they might get murder right this is after having to walk through several countries for up to seven months just to get to the border faith-based organizations now providing food shelter and clothes to the group of men and women in their 20s and 30s yeah we're um, not publicly revealing their location obviously to protect their privacy but uh, be assured that they are safe, uh, they are being well cared for, and they're in good spirits. All of them are here legally and have paperwork to move forward with immigration and stay in the U.S. Four of the asylum seekers have already been united with their families. The rest are being empowered to take over their own lives. Sure, we are collaborating with the city and county and different nonprofit agencies and partner groups and churches throughout the area. I know, for example, to, um, we've had a nurse on site um, that the county um, had sent. We have the fuel network attorneys coming, I believe today or another day this week. Faith leaders say they're ready to contribute to the community and are already asking for a job. And ultimately, look, my own father, he came here first. He worked, saved money. His first job was at McDonald's. It's just a different generation. It's from a different part of the world, but it's the same impetus. Since each one of these asylum seekers are, they have cases that are pending in different states, officials here are asking for legal representation. So any attorneys that are familiar with the process, if they could help them out, they're asking for that help. They're also asking for monetary donations so that these migrants can buy the things that, that they need and that they want, whether that be food or clothing. Chris, Laura. Yeah, Roxanne, clearly a lot of work being done to help them get on their feet and a lot that can't be revealed right now for their safety. But we know that you'll be following their journeys. Roxanne Elias, thank you.